Way back when you were young, you learned the alphabet. In English, it goes something like this. A, B, C, D, E, F, and they sing to it. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and it keeps going all the way. S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Well, we learn what's called alphabetical order because there's an order to these things right here. And if they are in an order, they are called ordinates. Now, you may know other things that have or order as well, such as numbers. One, two, three, four, five, and they keep going on forever, but they're also ordinates. And the ordinates are essential in most things we do in math. We're going to start off this chapter by teaching you about graphs and maps and charts and stuff like that by going to LDS.org and seeing how these ordinates are used together. Here we are on LDS.org in the study help section of studying the scriptures. You'll notice here we can go to Bible maps or church history maps. So let's look at the Bible maps right here. We scroll down and we see that it is, well look at that, we could look at map number one. It's a physical map of the Holy Land. Let's make it a little bit larger, look at that. We can see where Samaria is some of these names from the Bible. That's pretty neat. We could see uh, the missionary journeys of the Apostle Paul. Let's click on that thing and make it larger. Yeah, look at this. There's a Samothrace there, and there's Corinth. Oh, for the Corinthians. And there's, uh, you know, Jerusalem. He, where Paul went to, here's Rome. That's pretty neat. If we go and see the Persian map, Persian Empire here, We'll notice here's how big it grew, and there are a couple of key cities there. Notice what happens all the way along the top of each of them. They have A, B, C, D, and 1, 2, 3, 4, breaking these maps up into groups. And when we go back here to the list of maps, there's also something called a Bible Maps Index. And it's an index of place names is its other title. And what it does is it f explains how to use this. The Maps Index can help you locate a particular place on the maps. Each entry includes the map number, followed by the grid reference composed of a letter-number combination. They took two ordinates, such as D from the alphabet and 5 from the numbers, and D5 together is a, let's put them together like this, D5, that is called a coordinate because you are now using two ordinates together to specify a location. So let's find a few of these, like uh, Samothrace is in your textbook. You go down to the S's and Samothrace. It's an island. It says it's on map 13, square E1. And so if we go there, we are here's map 13 where we were, the missionary journeys of the Apostle Paul and we go to E1. So you find the first ordinate up here, E, and then you go down to 1, and it should be somewhere in this area, and there it is right there, Samothrace. And so the coordinates help us to locate things. So coordinates like this are used in maps. However, we're going to be doing stuff for the math class, and in math, these coordinates have a very particular use thanks to a guy by the name of Rene Descartes. There he is, Rene Descartes. Ah, uh, what a nice looking fellow. So the legend goes that he was kind of a sicklier child and uh, got used to sleeping in quite a bit. And later on in his life, as he became a mathematician and philosopher, he would lay in his bed late into the morning. And at one point he looked up and he saw a fly and it was wandering along the underside of his roof, he had kind of a thatched roof. And trying to decide where that fly was pinpointed, he uh, kind of had this idea, wait a second, we could use the idea of a grid with a, you know, this right here along one side of the roof and that along the other side. And you could pinpoint by putting numbers together, you know, you're like, oh, he's two over this way and three up, and you could pinpoint where the fly was. And by using numbers in each of these places, he's got coordinates, or also called an ordered 
pair. That's pretty cool. An ordered pair, it's a pair of numbers that are ordered, also known as a coordinate, uh, because you're using two ordinates together to describe where one point is. This particular use of using numbers to designate these locations on this system, we name in honor of him from the city where he was from, René from Cart. So we call it a Cartesian coordinate system. Cartesian for him, coordinate, because we're using two ordinates to describe where things are. Well, if we do another one, here's where the x's are along this one. The x's are the first ones. And the y's, a little positives up here, negatives down here are along this one. And so we could do a point like negative 3, 1 would be about right there. Negative 3, 1. That would be that point. And we could graph another one way down here, like 1 over and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 down. So this would be 1, negative 6. And if we connect these dots, uh, a little bit tough there to get a straight line. If we connect those dots, we have a triangle. And this was really the genius of what Descartes thought about, was that he connected all of this geometry that normally was just a triangle in and of itself, or a circle, or a square. And he put numbers to each of the points here, so that all of the algebra that we've been studying this entire semester could be used in studying shapes. So that connection is what he's really famous for. So if you were asked to graph the point 5, 1, you would go 5 on the x and 1 on the y. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then y1. And it pinpoints an exact location, just like on the map. All right, let's do some examples of those. To the boards! It's time for you to practice at the boards. Let's take out your notebook and practice graphing these seven points. When graphing, you should always start at the origin, at zero, zero, this spot right here. Then you're gonna look at the X ordinate and it's gonna tell you how far right or left to go. If it's positive, you go right. If it's negative, you go left. You then look at the second ordinate, the Y ordinate, and if it's positive, you're gonna go up. And if it's negative, it goes down. So just remember, X tells you how, how far left or right you go, and Y tells you how far up and down you go. Go ahead and pause the video, create yourself a little graph in your notebook, and graph these seven points. When you're done, unpause the video, and we'll, we'll uh, see how you did. Good luck. Okay, here we go. I'm going to graph this first point, 7, 2. So I always start here at the origin. This point, 0, 0, is called the origin. I'm going to start there. And because the X is 7, I'm going to go to the right 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then my Y is 2. It's positive, so I go up. This right here is the point 7, 2. Let's try the next one. Negative 4, negative 3. So start at the origin at 0, 0. Negative 4 means I need to go left 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I have a negative Y, so I need to go down 3. 1, 2, 3. That is our point, negative four comma negative three. Good. Number three, six, 10. I need to go to the right six because again, X tells me my right and left. Y's tell me my up and down. So I go six to the right and then down 10. Six, negative 10, all the way down there is that point. Negative eight, zero. Let's see, we start at the zero, zero point, the origin. And the X tells me to go to the left, negative 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Left me a negative number for the X means to go left. That's why we went left 8 spots. I don't go up and down any. The Y is 0, so I don't go up and down any. That right there is the point negative 8, 0. Okay, now uh, negative 2, 4. Uh, my X is negative 2. My Y is 4, so I'm going to go left 2, up 4. That's negative 2, 4. Let's try this 0, 9, 0, 9. So I go left, nothing, and up, 9. So 0, 9 would be this spot right here. And the last one, ooh, 11 halves comma negative 1 half. Uh, sometimes it, you can graph fractions. It can help you uh, to convert those to fractions if you want. 11 divided by 2 is 5.5, and that's negative 0.5. 
And so I would go 5.5 to the right, that's about right in here, and then go down 0.5, that's that spot right there. 5.5 comma negative 0.5. And that's it. Great work. Thanks for graphing points. Keep working hard. The final thing that's exciting about coordinate systems and graphs is that they allow you to not just have numbers running around, but you actually get to visualize how numbers change, how they grow. For example, if we have a revenue coming in from a small business we run, and in year one, we had, say, $200. And year two, we had $180. And year three, we had $195. Year four, uh, $225. And year five, uh, $270. Something like that. This, this would allow us to plot these points just like on the XY thing. Let's put the year one, two, three, four, five down here. And we're headed up to 200 or 300 up there. So maybe 200 there, 100 there. You can visualize what has happened over time. Year one was up at $200. Two was down just a little bit at 180. Three was up almost back up there at 195. Four was up at 225, a little bit higher. And then five was up here. And you're like, hey, through the years it's been increasing. We can visualize that thing. In fact, in section 3.3 when we talked about this, uh, we did this example of a savings account that started at 40 and then it grew $10 every month at a rate of 6% and so we had to compute the rate that would go into the FV formula and the number of periods and some of you might have been thinking shoot we could have just easily done it just one at a time that was easy we only need, really needed the last row the reason we had you go through this entire exercise to see all of them is that you can actually visualize and insert a chart. So let's go up here and say insert and we're going to view a chart. You have a whole bunch of different charts here but just one that connects the dots would be great. So it looks about like that and there we go. And that chart title you can move it over here so and you can see in year one it went just like that all the way up to year 15 and you can change the chart title to what you would like it to be savings you could change how you labeled these axes and other such options if you get into it great good luck on the assignment